Uh, like I told you guys yesterday, we're going to use the, the video of this thing as a uh, uh, a video on the as a platform video to introduce the, the new way we teach the, the press that hasn't really been filmed in the uh, on the DVD. This will be the the alterations we've made to the teaching progression in the third edition. Okay, so. Press is uh, way we teach it now is, is modified quite a bit from the original fairly strict version that was in the second edition. And the reason we do it differently now is because this new version better satisfies our criteria for more muscle mass and better range of motion and more weight lifted, and therefore giving you the ability to use the exercise that's stronger. So the way we're going to do it right now solves a couple of the mechanical problems that we have in the press quite a bit better than the old style did. Now, the, the mechanical problems that, that we encounter is one, the fact that we need a vertical bar path on all, on all barbell, barbell exercises because things just like to move in straight vertical lines. And two, we have a, a lateral, a rather a horizontal positioning problem between where the bar has to start off on the shoulders prior to the start of the press and the lockout position which will be anywhere from three to five inches behind that start position depending on your anthropometry. So first we need to have a movement that generates a vertical bar path and then we have to have a, a way to get the bar into position over the glenohumeral joint when it is locked out over the over the in the lockout position at the top. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is uh, the same way we have taught it before, with some tweaks on the second phase. The first phase of the movement is going to be where does the bar go at lockout? Okay, so all of the considerations for grip remain the same. The grip is close. We're using a close grip in order to minimize the moment arm between the grip on the bar and the shoulder joint. Elbows will be in front of the bar. And depending on your anthropometry, this bar position may in fact float over the shoulder. That's not relevant. The only thing that matters is the pressing efficiency. And we've got to keep the grip narrow in order to keep the forearm vertical and elbows are just slightly in front of the bar so that the forearm is vertical not just from this direction but from this direction as well. <coughs> okay so stance is shoulder width a little wider might even be a squat stance okay because the, the we're not using a ground reaction in this because it's not a, a push press. We just want a wide, stable stance. So, step one is, where does the bar go? Put it up over your head. At the top of the lockout, the barbell will be directly vertical to the point of rotation. So there's no moment arm between the bar and the point of rotation. And in this particular situation, the bar is directly over the glenohumeral joint. It has nothing to do with your head. It has nothing to do with your neck. It is load, point of rotation, zero moment arm. Okay? Now, at the top, we got to make sure that we're finally shrugged up into the top position because the traps hold the barbell up. The traps hold up the scapula. The scapula holds up the humerus. The humerus holds up the arm and the barbell is held up by all of this stuff so ultimately the traps are what holds up the bar. So in order to make sure the traps are fully engaged we shrug at the top like you're not through. Drive at the seat as hard as you can. Once this position is set, come back down, the second problem then becomes how do we get the bar there? This is where we solve the two mechanical problems, the vertical bar path problem and the horizontal displacement between start position and lockout position, which is about like this in Tom's case, okay? 
We are going to solve this problem with torso movement. We're going to move the whole body in order to solve this problem. So, what we're going to do is first push the hips forward and stand back up. Understand that this movement is from the hips. Let's go ahead and rack the bar and, and illustrate this little, this little movement pattern problem uh, before we use the barbell and go back to our, our standard way of doing things without the bar first, solve the problems, and then add the bar. Hands on hips. <clears throat> this motion has to take place from the hip joint. In other words, we're going to push the hips forward into a position that allows the bar a straight shot at lockout without having to go around the chin. And the way we do that is we push the hips forward and that brings the chin back relative to the bar without any spinal movement. Okay? So the spinal movement is stabilized by the abs. Abs hold the spine in normal anatomical position, just exactly like we do every other lift in the, in the system. Straight, normal thoracic extension, normal lumbar extension, and that whole system is stabilized by the abs so that the movement takes place forward from the hips. Below that, closest to the floor, there are no motion. There's no motion in the knees either. The knees are locked in place by the quadriceps. Whereas a push press is a vertical reaction, stretch reflex, we are going to turn this type of press into a horizontal stretch reflex so that he reaches forward with the hips, drives the bar up, and eventually what we'll do is time it so that the horizontal motion turns into the press, okay? But right now we've got to learn how to move the hips. So lock the knees, lock the abs. Chest is up, now push the hips forward. Good. Squeeze the knees. If you do not feel this in your quads, it's almost a cramp, it's wrong. Knee motion has to be controlled by the quadriceps so that Tension is built into this bow. This bow right here is tense from the abs and from the quads so that we're storing energy in that bow as you stretch forward the hips. Okay? In fact, you'll stretch forward the hips so much that you will feel the load go to your toes in this, in this procedure. Now, we don't lift anything on the toes, we lift on the middle of the foot because that's just the physics of the situation. What happens is, as he stretches forward, the bar comes off the chest, and the minute it does that, everything snaps back into position and the load centers over the midfoot, so that's not really a factor. But if you don't stretch forward far enough with the hips, then you, you'll mute the effect that the stored energy along that bow creates uh, in terms of helping convert this horizontal movement into upward bar movement. So that's, we're going to practice that first. We just put hands on hips and reach forward, tighten everything, reach forward and come back, reach forward and come back. And the further forward you can reach, the better. You just have to make sure there is no knee unlock during this procedure. Okay? Same grip, take the bar and the grip. We've already discussed, the grip is discussed in the book about how to take the grip. The bar will be centered directly over the heel of the palm with no moment arm on the wrist. So there's no leverage on the wrist and it doesn't interfere with, uh, it doesn't become a weak link in the press. So what we're going to do now is convert this hips motion into a press. Two steps. You're going to reach forward with the hips. You're going to press it up and then you get under the bar, okay? Again, reach forward with the hips, press up and get under the bar. And this is what it's gonna look like at this stage of the game. Two separate motions, hips forward and drive up and get under the bar. Driving up and get under the bar is one movement. Watch carefully how he leads with the hips first and then gets under the bar. 
Let the hips go first and then drive under the bar. Good. Rack it just a second. Now let's make a distinction between this order and the thing that you're going to do that will screw this up. Typically what happens at this point is that the order is forgotten and you just start flailing around and what will end up happening is you try to press and then you say, oh, hips. If you do that, you will produce a distance between shoulder joint and barbell. You will have pushed the bar out in front, pushed you back away from the bar, and that's how you miss a heavy press. Two ways to miss a heavy press. One, it doesn't come off of the shoulders at all. Two, you push it off the shoulders and the distance between the bar and the shoulder grows to the point where that leverage cannot be overcome. So if you get the order wrong, if you press and then use your hips, every time you will generate that distance and it will be wrong. So what we're gonna do is practice right now on the order. Take the bar, do a set of five, and for right now, we're just going to separate this into two movements and make sure that the order is correct. Hips go first, then you press. That's one. Four more. That's the way it ought to look right now. <clears throat> Three. Good. And that has to be preserved. Hips, then the bar moves. Hips, then the bar moves. If you do it like this, you'll, you'll prohibit that giant problem from ever getting built into the movement. Now, one more thing that we'll do with the empty bar. We have to make sure that the barbell stays as close to the shoulder joint as possible. Because, once again, that distance is what kills you. So, we're going to start doing that right now with the empty bar by aiming the bar at your nose as you go up and as you come down. We're going to establish the bar path by aiming for the nose. Now, the nose is not what we want to do. The nose is just a cue for keeping the bar close to the shoulder on the way up. Let's try that. And we're going to use both the, the, the concentric phase to begin with and the eccentric phase on the way down to build this target in. So hips, press, and the nose is what you're going to aim for. As close as you can keep that thing to your face, you will be keeping it close to the shoulder. And on the way down, you aim for the nose as well. This gets you used to keeping the bar in a nice vertical path as close to the shoulder as you can get it. So nose is your target. Grab up and then down. And last one, and make sure that we're shrugging at the top. Okay, and back down. Now, a couple of sets with the empty bar. Let's move to 95, okay? <laughs> Now some time has passed and you're familiar with the, the hips first, then the press. Hips first, then the press. What we're going to do now is a couple like that and then we're going to put it together so that you can see how the stretch generated by the hips feeds the press off the shoulder. Just do the first two. There's two separate movements just like we did with the empty bar. So it's hips, then shoulder. Just exactly like that. Separate movement, hips, then shoulders. Just exactly like that. Now, the timing is critical. And this is what makes this a relatively technical exercise. There should be no time between reaching and the rebound off of the front to generate the press. If you can, hips, and just, but the, the timing is terribly critical though. That has to generate the bounce, like that. Okay, now we're gonna build in the, the timing here. Forward hips, it's gotta bounce. That's pretty good. Reach. Don't get ahead of yourself on the press. You gotta 
Okay, you're a little bit backwards on that time. Hips first. Feel the balance off of the front. That is, can you feel the difference on that? Hips first. You've got to feel the, got to feel the reach forward. The reach forward has to generate the rebound. Okay? Let me see if I can illustrate it. It's not that quite enough practice for this. That look a little look cleaner on the bounce. Yeah. Okay. That's that's the way this is done. And it and it is not going to be terribly easy to get this done the first time you do it. Because of the of the nature of the the push of the hips forward generating the rebound up, it's gotta be timed correctly. Okay. So let's uh, let's go ahead and, and break up into groups and start. Everybody wants to press today. Get some empty bars out, and we're just going to go through and see if we can generate some decent presses today. Okay? The teaching progression, and we don't have to do it with this group, but the teaching progression calls for phase one, where does the bar go over the hip? Okay? And then phase two, how does it get there? All right? All of you guys know where it goes and stuff, so you don't need to need to worry about that, but what you want to do is make sure that hips are I need a wider stance than that. The real mirror. Wider stance, good. Take a big breath, reach. This, and here's what you gotta do. You gotta make sure that some abs control that. Don't be a good don't do a lumbar bend because lumbar bending is, is not as strong. It may not hurt you, but it's not as strong because you don't store tension in the abs if you bend from the lumbar. Okay. Squeeze. Okay. It's all right. Good. Abs. Abs. You've got to cue your abs right now. Good. That looks a lot better. Shorty. Looks a lot better. Okay. Now, if you'll remember, we used to teach this thing where we breathed at the top and bounced off of the bottom. Since we are now really emphasizing the hips forward, this, this punch of the hips forward at the bottom, you have to take all of the breaths at the bottom so that there's not a rebound off the shoulders from the top. The rebound has to be generated from the hips, the forward movement of the hips, not the bar coming back down generating this bounce because if you do that you can't activate the hips completely. So from now on all of the breathing has to take place at the bottom after a reset back to the start position. Breathe, hips, and drive. Okay let's try it again like that. Very nice wide stance, big giant breaths, tight knees. Good. Big air. Hips. Ooh, good. Yeah, okay, you'll never do that if you're aiming for the nose. Abs. Abs, tight abs. Good. Reach, reach. Not enough hips that time. Reach forward with them. Okay, it's getting there. Good. Okay. Two. Tight knees, better knees than that. There you go. Good. That's still that's still a little two-piece movement. Okay. Try to reduce. See if you can make it a balance out of the front instead of a instead of two pieces. You may not be ready for that yet, but that looked better. Do one more like that, real fast in the front. Okay. Okay. Good. Stop at the bottom. Now, stop, reset, big breath. Good. This is a real good example of the bounce here. Good. 
tight timing, in and out in the, in the Good, that's the way it ought to look. That's a good set. As far as you can go, you'll feel the weight go up the You can practice this reach. It's, it's got to be a rebound. Like that. Like that. It's got to be a rebound. And it's got to be a rebound out of the hips, not the spine. Okay? So tight, tight, tight. There you go. Again, the same thing. Now, do that. Catch that rebound and press it. That's the movement. That's the movement. Again, just like that. Rebound and press. That's the motion. That's exactly the motion. Doing it that way, you involve all of this muscle mass, as opposed to just doing a strict press with it. You do more weight, and more stuff is moving. More stuff has to be controlled, and it's more convertible to athletic. Reach and bounce. Just exactly like that. Exactly, exactly. Just bounce. What you're gonna don't press the button. Just bounce out the front. Bounce out the front. Bounce out the front. Do it again. Good. More forward. Good. Feel the bar want to feel the bar try to leave at the right time. That's the thing. Now do it and let the bar go. There you go. Again, wait. One more time without the press. Just bounce it. See, and it's trying to, it's trying to go up. Flip. Okay. Again, more hips. More hips. That's the movement. See the timing there? That's the movement. There you go. That's the movement. Further, further forward you can reach the better. Reach. Just let it bounce. Reach and let it bounce. And you just try to make your hands right. more to your toes. Way for there you go. Again, make sure abs are tight when that's taking place. Tight abs. This time, let it press. There it is, and there it is. Just exactly like that. Just exactly like that. That's exactly right. And then back. Forward and back. Now, get the forward and bounce off of it. Bouncing off of this. Good. Just like that. Just exactly like that. Good. Now, take the forward. Now, you're going to bounce forward, but you're not going to press. Right? You're not going to press. You're going to bounce with the bar in your hand. Feel the bar try to leave your hands. If you hit it and come back fast, it'll actually try to leave your hands. Now, press. Bounce. There it goes. There it goes. There's your plan. So if this goes first, it's going to dry without the press. See, it tries to come up. Again. Good. Now press it. Come on, come on. See, now every time you're adding the press, the forward hip movement, the forward hip movement is pronounced as it should be. So you just have to make sure that the reach generates the bounce. Okay. Don't press it. Just grab it. See it? Bounce. With the bar in your hand. And if you're doing this right, you'll feel that the bar wants to come up. Just breathe. Don't, don't press it. Wide your stance a little bit. Throw it out like a squat. Nice tight abs, tight quads, and just reach. Faster than that. Hit the front. Okay. Good. Now, hit the front and press. That's the reason. See the difference there? Again, it's exactly hit the front and generate the bounce out of the, out of the reach. Nope, nope, nope. Feel the difference in the timing there? Sure feel the difference? Good. Reach first. That's the move. But it's got to be tied together best. <clears throat> so you're, now you're killing the rebound for it. 
Just do it without pressing. Do it without the press. Bounce. Bounce. Shoot forward and come back. Now, see the ball the again. One more time and press it this time. Reach. Reach. That's it. See, that time in general is the bounce. And that's what you're trying to get. That little, that little tight time in there that generates the you drive on. Right. right, not leaning back. Because leaning back doesn't generate the same tension between these two segments. It's reaching forward. Well, you got, you're starting off. Forward. Stand up completely upright. Completely upright. Now squeeze here. Squeeze it. Squeeze quiet. Now reach. Reach. Stand back up. No, don't press it. Don't worry about pressing it. Stand up tall. Stand up tall. Big breath. Reach. And then, you know, hit it. Hit it. No, you're not stopping. Don't stop it. Good. Again, big breath. Now, if you do this sharp, you'll feel the bark rise up off your shoulder. He tried to go. Like that. I'm impressed. If you're doing this, if you're doing it correctly, that generates an upward moment on the ball. An upward moment. On the ball. Too slow. It's a reach and bounce. Bounce off the front. Feel your toes. Okay. A little better. That last one was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. The last one you referred to. Forward. Forward. Yeah. Forward first. No. Timings. Timings backwards. Timings backwards. That's better. That's it. That's it. That's it. Reach. No, no, no. When you do it like that, when you do it like that, you're backing yourself away from the bar. You're creating that gap that kills you. You gotta, it's got to be in that order. Because if it's the other, if it's opposite of that, you're going to kill yourself with the with the leverage you build in. Nearly Reach way, way, way. There you go. Second one better than the first. Yeah. Not enough movement. Not enough travel. Involvement yeah. of the torso. Feel it? 
Cowboys, the East Centric is gone. The East Centric is gone now as a part of the movement. Okay. Previously, we had used that East Centric to bounce up. Right now, we're trying to, to rely on the torso movement to, to, to generate the rebound. So if you don't kill it dead, take a breath, and do it like that, then you're, you're really not, you, you don't have the potential to do as much weight as you can do. And is there no, even if, could you come up and down right here? Could you stop here? There is, now there is going to be a little component okay. of, a, of, a, of an elbow, shoulder, charge on that bounce as well that's, that's generated better it's generated yeah. out of the hips as well it does a little it creates a little okay. bounce through here as well but it can't do that if you don't lean with the hips yeah. you got to make the hips generate it'll be more effective it'll be more effective as a bounce if you're traveling more forward more stretch. As far as you go, go on to the toes. Go on to the toes. Pretty good. Reach. Reach on these last two. shoulders and combine that with a hip thrust from the from the top down from the top the, the previous re previously taught eccentric rebound because when you use an eccentric rebound from just lowering the press the muscle mass involved is pretty much just shoulder and tricep unless you intend to start kicking in a knee kick which we which we're not going to do anyway if you stop down here and generate the balance off of all of this muscle mass through this bow through you, that you've got more muscle mass involved in the movement and more potential to lift more weight because there's more muscle mass involved in the exercise than just what's bouncing off the shoulder. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Hard. Don't try to press it right now. Just get the bounce first. There. There. Feel good again. Good again. See the mark trying to lead. Good. The same thing in press. That's the movement. That's the movement. See the difference? There you go. There you go. There you go. Whole different deal. It's a whole different deal. Squeeze your knees tighter. 